Welcome! Well, it feels like an age since I last did a music collecting update video, and that's probably because it is quite a while. This is one that I've had to delay for obvious reasons for almost a month, really. It, it was taking a while for me to get everything together for it, because one of the items took quite a while to arrive from the other side of the world, and I'll show you that one first. Also, with my bad arm, I've not really been able to lift things. Um, as you can see, there's no pot on now. Um, in fact, this bandage is something that I'll be taking off very soon. Uh, this is just more to like protect the skin for a few days while um, the bruising and where the stitches have been can heal up properly. It's not perfect, this arm yet. Uh, still a lot of weakness, but I feel that I can show you all these records and things. Well, it's mostly records, but there's one other item in the middle of all this that I think you'll find pretty cool as well. So let's get cracking with the first record that I'm going to show you today from this, well, it's not just one haul. This is numerous purchases from numerous websites. Uh, first one from Discogs Marketplace. This was the one that I waited about a month for. Stifled Love from People Like Us. This came all the way from a Discog seller in China. Can't remember the price, but I think it was pretty reasonable given that there was international postage. It was just a case of waiting about a month for it to arrive. But I really love the artwork on this. I have listened to this. Um, this might be one of the last records that I listened to before um, I had my accident. So I've not listened to any records since then. So I think there's going to be um, one in here that I've not heard yet. But um, I'll talk about that shortly. Really cool artwork. I won't bother showing you the disc because it's just a standard black disc. There is some cool discs to show you later on though. That's never come out on CD, funnily enough. It's only ever come out either as a download or on vinyl. And I was glad to get that as it's a fairly rare edition now, this particular album from people like us. Couple more people like us things to show you. One's this unusual thing here. I suppose it's not exactly very aesthetically pleasing, but that might be sort of the point of it. It's a 10 inch single and it's Honeysuckle Boulevard by people like us and longtime collaborator Ergo Fizmiz. And I think there's four tracks on both sides. I think this is an edition out of 500, but um, I can't see a number. So I'm not sure what edition mine is, all I know is it is one out of 500, but not the number one out of 500 necessarily. No, there's six tracks on here, so it's, it's like an EP or a mini album really this, as there's three tracks on side A, three on side B. Uh, the reason it looks so boring, there's no cover or anything, is to the best of my knowledge, and I'm trying to think when this would have come out, this would have been maybe around 2008, 2009. This was basically a free thing where you downloaded a voucher off, it was either People Like Us' website, or actually it might have been the Arts Council of England's website, funnily enough, and then you could take it to one of maybe a dozen record shops, like little independent record shops around the country, and I think there was a couple of international ones as well, like New York and maybe elsewhere where you could actually go and pick this up for free as long as you had printed off the voucher off the website. So it's like an Arts Council collaboration thing, this. I listened to this some weeks ago. It's standard people like us and Ergo Fismis, really. It's really bonkers. Yeah, nice for the collection. It wasn't an awful lot of money to pay that. Whoever sold it to me probably made a profit if they were the one who got it for free in the first place. All right, last People Like Us thing to show you is her latest album. Although it's that's not technically true. It's People Like Us' latest release. But originally this album, Welcome Abroad, came out in 2011. Um, there's a few sleeve notes on the back. I'll try and summarise them. Essentially, this was Vicky Bennett's work when she was stuck in Iceland in uh, 2010, March to April 2010 when uh, there was all the um, air disruptions from the Icelandic volcanoes. Finally been given a release on record about 10 years later. As you can see, this is brand new and sealed. This is from Amazon, by the way. This was an Amazon purchase. I've not listened to this yet, as this came after I had my accident. 
and I'm really looking forward to hearing it. As I think, really, as certainly as far as records are concerned, this completes the People Like Us collection for albums. Anyway, I think there's a couple of singles that I could get, and I may get them, but I've got the tracks elsewhere on CD or record. This was kind of like the missing piece of the puzzle in a lot of ways, but there may be more people like us. In fact, I'm sure there will be more people like us stuff to show you. I've got a lot of their stuff on CD that I've just not shown, and I've been getting that for a couple of months now. And um, I'm hoping I'm going to be able to do some sort of audio showcase of all the people like us albums and things that I've got on CD, but that's going to depend on copyright and stuff, and I've not really been physically able to put anything like that together. But I'm hoping I'm going to be able to do something like that maybe sometime next month. I'm going to see how it goes, because obviously I have other things to do. So that's all the people like us. Right, let's change tack now and move away from vinyl or records to a really swish, what looks like a book. Kind of from a distance, it looks like a really posh Bible or something. But no, this isn't very biblical when you realise that it's by Lindemann, the super duo of Till Lindemann from Rammstein and Peter Lund... L oh, I can never remember his name. I nearly said Lundgren then, but no, that's Dolph Lundgren. Where's his name? He should be in here somewhere. Tatgren, that's it, Peter Tatgren. Uh, this is live in Moscow, and uh, this is the deluxe CD and Blu-ray edition. This was recorded, I think, March 2020, so it was one of the final performances for pretty much anyone, really, in Europe um, before the initial lockdown started. Um... In fact, you can see people wearing masks already in the crowd in, in a lot of uh, the Blu-ray. Now, I did initially just order the Blu-ray of this because I wasn't sure how easily available this deluxe edition with the CD came out. I ordered it from EMP. This particular edition, by the way, is from a website called Banquet Records. They're like an independent record shop. Um, I just found that they had this in stock, so I thought I'd give them a try and I got a 10% code for them as well. I'd ordered the standard Blu-ray from EMP, received it, and I thought, fine, but I kind of want this edition with the CD as well. I just like having the audio and the video together, if possible. So uh, I sent off the Blu-ray as an act of kindness to Geeky Heathen. He has unboxed that for patrons, but whether that's come out on his YouTube channel or not yet, I don't think so, but it won't be too much longer. So uh, go and subscribe to Geeky Heathen and uh, he'll talk more about that Blu-ray edition as I surprised him with it. But this is basically that, but it's coming like a hard case book, as you can see here. And then we've got the, what's that? That's the CD at the back, Blu-ray at the front, and lots of reading material, although most of it is in Russian, admittedly. And the actual concert, I've watched, I've not listened to the CD, but the concert is the same. I just wanted both formats in one. Um, I love these collector's editions. Anything to do with Rammstein, and they really package these things immaculately. Just really great artwork, really high quality feeling item, this. And the concert itself, wow, what an experience. You watch a Rammstein concert and there's all sorts going on, and Lindemann is pretty much that with the dial turned up even more some of the stuff's pretty graphic like some of the uh, film images that they use behind the stage <laughs> yeah if you can watch any of it i mean it's not for the faint-hearted some of it and uh, some of it is deliberately designed to cause offense not in a horrible way just in a like oh let's be provocative kind of way um, I'd be interested to know what Glenn Geeky Eden thought of this, as um, I'm assuming he would have watched this by now. But that's live in Moscow from Lindemann. Right, we move back on to two of my recent favourite purchases. And I've got even more vinyl records to show you, but they're all from the one artist who I've just started collecting. And I want to listen to all those and then do a complete video about the albums that I've bought. So... That'll be coming along hopefully sometime in July, but I need to listen to everything first and uh, really get an opinion about what I've bought. These last couple of items are two fantastic albums. I'm really glad I bought both of these because both of them are kind of impulse purchases in a way. The first one 
is television themes by Matt Berry, or as it's credited on the back, Matt Berry and the Maypoles. This was from, where did I order this from? I've ordered from so many different websites. I think this was from Sister Ray Records. No, actually this was from Banquet Records. Um, Lindemann was from Sister Ray. I think I got 10% off from both sites. They're both like independent record stores in the UK and then they've got a website where you can mail order kind of thing. Yeah, uh, the graphics that I put up on screen will show the right website and everything. Matt Berry's more known as a comedic actor certainly in the UK and I think internationally as well. Very famous for things like the IT crowd, Garth Marenghi's Dark Place, Snuffbox, What We Do in the Shadows and he does lots of voiceovers for advertising and stuff. But what I think a lot of people don't necessarily realise about him is that he's a very accomplished musician. This is obviously what it says on the tin, it's television themes and it's a real nostalgia hit this. There's a lot of stuff from my childhood here like Rainbow and Picture Box, World in Action. Themes for UK shows in particular, I don't think there's any US things here. Something called Wild Track that I wasn't familiar with, I'm not sure where that is. Even a cover version of the early 80s Top of the Pops theme that was originally by Midgeur and Phil Lynn at Yellow Pearl. This is limited to 500 copies and it was actually a Love Record Stores Day 2020 edition and I did get a couple of albums if you cast your mind back to well over a year or almost a year now. I'd ordered from my local record store, Tallbird, a orange Love Record Store Day edition of New Order's Music Complete and a Spatter edition of St Etienne's Words and Music. And this came out at around the same time. It was for that particular event. And it did catch my eye last year, and I wish I'd bought it last year but it's taken me nearly a year. This is easy enough to get on standard black vinyl, but when I saw that this was like 20 pound and then I could get another couple of quid off it, when this was the limited to 500 white vinyl edition, then uh, I couldn't resist. Here we are, look. Lovely, bright white disc there. Matt Berry and the Maypoles television themes. Mostly instrumental, but you do hear him singing in places on here, namely the rainbow theme, as that does have a substantial amount of lyrics in. Some stuff I recognised, other stuff I wasn't quite so familiar with, but um, if you grew up in the 70s and 80s, then uh, this album is just such a good nostalgia kick, and it's made me want to get more of Matt Berry's music, because he does release quite a few albums. This is on the Acid Jazz label, by the way. I think generally his style of music seems to be sort of like a psychedelic folk sort of deal normally from what I can tell but this is something completely different. It's a novelty album when all said and done but it's just done really well. If you're nostalgic for the TV shows and the TV themes that you grew up with during your childhood here in the UK 40, 50 years ago then uh, you got to love this. I listened to most of the album on YouTube before I decided I wanted to buy it and have a physical copy, but really enjoyed that. An impulse purchase, but um, it has been tempting me on and off for about a year now, so glad I've finally got it. And the last thing from yet another site, this one from The Sound of Vinyl, a great website which I use quite a lot, one of the more major record selling websites in the UK, and I think they've got a US site as well. And wow, what I call this album, what I describe it as is sumptuous. Sumptuous, <laughs> even. <laughs> I can't speak, I'm too excited. This is a marvellous set, really, really amazing. This is Moby and Reprise, or Reprise, Reprise, I think it is. Um, and it's released on the Deutsche Grammophon label. And uh, Deutsche Grammophon is the oldest surviving record label in the world. I mean, it'll be owned by Universal or whoever now, but that was the very first record label that ever started releasing music on disc, which would have been your old um, shellac gramophone discs. Maybe even there were, might have been another format before that. I'm not entirely sure. But yeah, they, that was like the 1800s. That imprint, and it's mainly classical, is still going today. And uh, this is Moby's first release on it. And what reprise, I can't say it, reprises, is um, kind of a selection of his greatest hits, but they re-recorded with like an orchestra and 
other acoustic instruments and special guest vocalists and it's such a good album i like the fact that it's a gatefold sleeve i did manage to conserve the hype sticker here so it's making my arm ache a little bit so i need to be a bit careful holding it steve carlson who's a prominent vinyl community member on youtube um, he got this around the same time I did as I pre-ordered this before it came out and I think Steve did as well. He had a lot of good things to say about repri reprise, I can't say it, reprise. And um, it's not the first Moby album I've got, I've got uh, Play by Moby on minidisc. I have liked Moby for years, I liked his early like proper techno-y stuff. Um, I wouldn't mind getting some of that in my collection. But I really, really rate this. It's like a film soundtrack, just the way it's been produced. This sort of classical electronica crossover. Just the whole Deutsche Gramophon imprint just instantly adds an air of history and class to it. And the icing on the cake for me was I paid a pound more to get the non-black edition. So pull out one of the inner sleeves, which is very nice. This has got like an essay on it. It's two discs as well, but they both look the same. But I want to show you one of the discs as it's this really nice grey here. So this is a brilliant album. I'm so happy I got it. I knew I'd like it as soon as I saw that it was coming out and I pre-ordered it. And unusually for me, if I'm pre-ordering something, it's really an artist that I'm collecting anyway, like New Order, as soon as they put something out to pre-order i'll get it instantly with moby i don't collect him particularly like i say i've only got one other album of his but as soon as i saw this and what it was his greatest hits reworked in a classical and acoustic vein and with guests like um, gregory porter chris christopherson luna lee skylar gray some people I've heard of, some I haven't, but just from start to finish across both discs, just a really, really good album. Moby Reprise on Deutsche Gramophon. And there we are, that was my recent record haul. As I say, I do have more records to show you, uh, ones that I've not listened to yet. They're all by one artist, I can't wait to get stuck into those as um, that's a set that I'm determined to finish at some point, but we will talk about that in a future video. So thank you all for watching. Special thanks go, as they always do, to my wonderful subscribers and patrons. Thank you for bearing with me throughout this month as I've slowed the uploads down after a while, as um, I can fully recuperate. And I've said it before in a previous video, but I'll say it again. Thank you to everyone for your well wishes and people checking on me and you know sending me texts and messages and stuff asking how i'm doing um that's really kind really touching far be it from me to keep this soppiness going i need to go now and because it's the one album out of this particular pile that i've not listened to yet i think i'm gonna go and finally put a record on in june after weeks of really not being able to hold anything in two hands and i'm gonna put on people like us welcome abroad and I do hope that all of you are going to join me again for my upcoming next record collecting video. Cheers, everyone. See ya!